Oh, hello. Welcome to this overview of managing content with October. A lot of people see October and think it's just a tool for developers. And that is true because we are developers and we built a product that we absolutely love to use ourselves. But we also know that most websites need to work for people who aren't developers. And that's what I'm going to show you today. How you can take all the exciting and powerful features you love as a developer and give that same experience to your clients or other non-technical users. First, we'll install October using a theme of a fictional client website. Then I'll walk through the process of setting up a client account, and then we'll log in with that account and start managing the content. So I'll quickly run through the installation process, and then we'll just fill out the details here that we need to get started. So here we are on the third screen of the installer, and it gives us three options. We can start from scratch, start from a theme, or use a project ID. In this case, we'll want to start from a theme. And here you can see the fictional client website called House of Chairs that demonstrates how to build a client-friendly website. So this is a theme that we'll want to use, and we'll do that by clicking Confirm. And that kicks off the installation process. You can follow these steps if you want to reproduce this screencast and make your own client-friendly website. Once the installation is finished, the first thing we'll do is set up a separate admin account. This account will restrict the visibility of any features that might be too technical. So there we go, the install's finished, so let's keep moving. And the first thing we'll do is log in with our details and then navigate directly to the Settings Administrators area. And from here we'll click on New Administrator and I'm going to create a new administrator called Client. I'll give them a name of my client and set them up with a password. So we'll click Create and now we have a client account. From here, I'm just going to cherry pick features that I think the client's going to need, such as managing the blog and also managing users. So there we go, we've created a client account. Still with us? Good. Now I'm going to log out and then we're going to log back in as the client account. So I want you to pretend as if you are the client from this point on. So here's the dashboard. This is the screen that you'll first see when you log into the administration area. You can manage pages, media, users, write blog posts, and it even shows the lovely Google Analytics plugin, which shows you how many people are viewing your site on a daily basis. Now let's preview the website and see what that looks like. So here is the House of Chairs website. It has a home page, which we're on now. It has a list of chairs and it also has a contact form. So let's get into managing the content of this website. In the admin area, if we click on the pages menu item, this will bring us to the area where we manage the majority of the content. To the left, we can see several menu items. The first menu item, Pages, allows you to manage the content of existing pages and create new ones. Menus lets you manage the various navigation links used in the website, like the main menu. Some links can be automatically generated depending on how you structure the pages. Content is used for reusable areas of content on the website, such as contact details. Snippets let you add rich functionality anywhere on your page, like a login form, for example. You can pin down the sidebar by clicking on the little thumbtack icon in the top right-hand corner. Now let's open the home page. Here we can see the content that can be found on the home page. We have the content area, a middle section, and the right section, which we can see here, here, and here. The content area can be made full screen by clicking the full screen icon to the right of the editor toolbar. Now we're shown the content in a full screen editing mode. You can click the button again to disable. 
All pages use a layout, and the layout determines which fields are available to us when we're editing the content. So we might like to create a new page called About. So let's go and do that. We'll click the Add button, and then give the page a name called About. The URL is automatically created from the name that we give the page. And as you can see, the layout selected is called Chair. If we select another layout called Home, you can see that the content, middle section and right section become available. But if I select Chair again, we only have Content and Sidebar. If you don't know which layout to select, it's best to stick with the default layout in most cases. You might have noticed there's a new tab up here called Header. This is here because each page can have a unique image and tagline. And we can see that here by clicking on the contact page. It's got a banner and also a tagline. So let's go ahead and add our tagline. We can also select a banner image by clicking on the icon here and this will open the Media Manager. The Media Manager is a powerful tool that lets you manage everything from images, videos and audio. In this case we want to upload a banner image. So we'll click Upload and then select an image from our computer. Once the image is uploaded, we simply double click and it now appears as the banner image. All that's left to do now is paste in some content for our About page. And that's really how easy it is to create a new page. So we'll click Save, and you can see it appears now in the side menu. Everybody knows a page is nobody until somebody links to you. So let's add a link to the home page. In the content here, we may want to make the words House of Chairs link to the About page that we just created. So all we have to do is highlight the text and click the link button and then select insert link. This pop-up shows a list of pages that already exist. So we can select the new page we created called about. There it is down the bottom. Once we selected that, we click insert and our new link has been created. So let's save the home page and then go have a look. So as we can see, if we scroll down, the House of Chairs is now a link, and if we click on that link, we can see our new page with our new banner image and also the tagline. Fantastic! The cool thing about pages is they can support nesting. So if we want to add a couple of child pages, we can. All we do is click Add Subpage underneath the page itself. So let's create a team page. We'll paste in some content and also give it a tagline and select a banner image. Let's also create a facilities page. We'll add some content and give it a tagline as well. Great, so now we have two new pages that live underneath the About page. The layout that we selected for our pages, called Default, has been set up in a way so that any sub-pages are detected and this side menu automatically appears. So now we can see our Team page and Facilities page that we just created. And that's how the product pages have been set up too. So let's say we want to add a new page called Sofa Beds. We can do that by clicking Add Sub-Page to the Chairs menu item. All we have to do here is type in sofas and then paste in our content. We'll also paste in some content for the sidebar. Give this page a tagline and also select a banner image. Now we can save this page and it appears under the list of subpages. You can also sort subpages by clicking this icon here. So we can bring the Sofas subpage to the very top. The home page has been set up to automatically pick up the list of chairs, including the new chair that we just created, Sofas, along with the banner and tagline that we chose. 
You'll also notice it now appears in the main menu too. And there's our new chair, the sofa. So that covers the basics of page creation. Now let's move on to menus. If we select the menus item in the left hand side, you can see that there are three menus. Let's open the main menu. Here we can see the three menu items that currently exist on the front end. We can add a new link to this menu by clicking add item. From here, we can give the menu item a title. So let's add a link to our new about page. So we'll enter about. Under this section type, we can select the type of link that we'd like to add to the menu. In this case, we want to link to a static page. From the reference dropdown, we can select the about page that we created from before. All we do now is click apply and then save the menu. Now returning to the website, we can see the about menu item now appears in the main menu. Let's have a look at the footer menu. You can see this menu only contains one item and it's called everything. That means this menu will display all the static pages that we've created so far. We can see what that looks like on the website by scrolling down to the footer. Look, there's all the about pages and the new chair that we created. As you can see, managing the menus on your website is a very straightforward process. Now let's move on to content. If we select the content menu item and open this folder, we can see that there are certain areas of the website that have been broken into content blocks. Let's open the content block called contact details. This content block contains the contact details that are shown both on the contact web page and also in the footer. So let's say that we've moved address and we need to change this address to something else. We can simply update the address right here. Now if we save the content and return back to the website, we should notice the address in the footer is now updated. Now let's move on to snippets. And this is the final section of managing the page content. I've set up a couple of snippets that we can use here. The first one, latest news, shows a small feed that contains the most recent blog posts. And the other is a sign-in form that allows clients to register and sign up. So let's add these to the home page. We'll open the home page again. And instead of these boring middle section and right sections, maybe we'd like to put some latest news and also a login form here. So let's empty out the middle section. I'll also close these to make a bit more room. We'll want to change the title here to say latest news and we'll get rid of this paragraph. To add the snippet, all we do is click on it. Now we have a snippet of latest news. We might also like to add a link below that says view all the latest news. And just like before, we can create a link here by clicking on insert link. And from here, we'll want to link to the blog page. Now let's work on the right section. Here, we might like to change the title to be customer sign in and then change this content to say something like sign in to view prices and instructions. Just like from before, to add the sign in snippet, we just click on it. Now we can save the home page and then have a look. If we scroll down, we can see the new snippets have taken the place of the old content. Here we have some latest news and also a customer sign in form. This is where customers can sign up and also we can view the latest news. The latest news is easily managed as blog posts using the blog section in the administrative area and these support using vibrant imagery for each blog post as well. You can see snippets in general are a powerful concept because it allows the developer and the client to easily work together. There are so many more features I could cover in this screencast, but it looks like we've run out of time. I hope you enjoy using your new website. Of course, if you want to test this theme, you can find it on GitHub 
or via the October website. Take care and goodbye.